We are in Montana at the battlefield of Custer's Last Stand. The Battle of the Little Bighorn. You are looking at Reno Hill, a high point above the Little Bighorn River. This is where Major Marcus Reno formed a defensive position after being defeated by the Native American Indians in the Valley Charge. The Valley Charge was the beginning of the Battle of the Little Bighorn. This is the view from Reno Hill looking northwest towards the Valley of the Little Bighorn. This is the location where Major Marcus Reno formed a defensive position after being crushed by the warriors from the southern end of the Indian village. In the spring of 1876, General Sheridan ordered his commanders to capture non-reservation compliant Indians and return them back to the reservations. A plan was formed. Three military columns were to converge from three directions to entrap the Indians. Each column would be strong enough to defeat the 500 to 800 warriors. This number of warriors was the estimate from the Indian Bureau based on the number absent from the reservations. On June 21, General Terry split his command. Custer was to lead his regiment south and then west, up the Rosebud, and then down Reno Creek. Terry would ascend the Little Bighorn Valley from the north. They would meet at the Indian village. It turns out that only Custer's command will engage the Indians. He is 36 hours early to the fight. On June 25, Custer will divide his command into four groups. Custer, Reno, Benteen and the Pack Train. In this video we are going to trace the trail of Major Marcus Reno from where he was ordered by Custer to charge the Indian village to where he formed his defensive position on Reno Hill. The village encampment was comprised of the various Sioux, Northern Cheyenne, and other Indian tribes camped along the Little Bighorn River. There was an estimated total of 8,000 villagers, with about 1,800 of them warriors. The number of warriors at the battle, as it turned out, was two to three times larger than the U.S. government estimates. Oops. Now let's get an orientation of the battlefield before we follow Reno's route. In this battlefield view, up is to the north. Last Stand Hill, in the upper left section, is where Custer and five companies of soldiers met their end. Last Stand Hill is approximately four miles north of the Reno Hill defensive site and is at the northwestern end of the battlefield site. The next place of interest is the morass. This marks a southeastern position of the cavalry movement. The morass is a watering hole formed by the confluence of the main fork and north fork of Reno Creek. All of Custer's command have stopped here on their way down Reno Creek to water their horses and the pack train mules. Custer is the first to stop at the morass and at this point has not yet thought that the Indian village is aware of the cavalry presence. This brings us to the Lone TP. The Lone TP marks the position where Custer has been informed by Indian scouts that the cavalry has been discovered by the Indian village. Custer makes his decision to attack. Ford, A, is where Reno, on his way to the Valley Charge crosses the Little Bighorn River. The most northern point Reno will reach in the Valley Charge is where he stops to form a skirmish line. This is where the warriors meet Reno head-on. A skirmish line is a cavalry formation where the soldiers dismount their horses and fire their weapons on foot. As the skirmish line quickly disintegrates, the soldiers scramble to the timber to their west and towards the bluffs. This brings us to the timber fight area. Just prior to Reno's retreat, his command is in disarray. The soldiers seek the safety of the timber, but only for about 30 minutes. They are overwhelmed by the force of the warriors. Reno orders a full retreat to the top of the hill. Not everyone is aware of his orders. Mayhem is in full swing. That is the orientation of the battlefield. In the rest of the video, we will follow Reno after he gets his orders to attack the village. We will outline the timeline and some more details of the cavalry movements. About 2 p.m. on that fateful afternoon, Custer and Reno are up Reno Creek, near the site of the Lone TP. The Lone TP contains the remains of a deceased Sands Ark warrior from the Battle of the Rosebud. The Battle of the Rosebud was fought one week earlier. Custer, being warned that the cavalry has now been spotted, decides to attack the village immediately. This is one day earlier than previously planned. Custer has his troops divided into four groups. The pack train of supplies is one group that lags the main forces. Benteen's group scouts and covers the left flank. 
Reno's group will attack the southern part of the village. Custer's group will attempt to capture the non-combatants. Custer orders Reno to attack the south end of the village and that Reno's command would be fully supported by the rest of the cavalry. Reno commands G, A, and M companies, a force of about 140 soldiers and some Indian scouts. Reno's command begins a trot towards the Little Bighorn Valley. Meanwhile, Captain Frederick Benteen is on a scout that protects the left flank of the cavalry. Benteen commands H, D and K companies, a force of about 125 soldiers and some Indian scouts. The scouting mission has Benteen south of the cavalry in the valleys above Reno Creek. This puts Benteen about one hour behind both Custer and Reno. Benteen will finish his scouting mission around 2.35 p.m. when he waters his horses at the morass. The morass is a watering hole near the confluence of the main fork and north fork of Reno Creek. Reno crosses the Little Bighorn River around 2.50 p.m. This crossing is named Forde, which is near the confluence of the Little Bighorn River and Reno Creek. Shortly after Reno crosses Forde, Custer has made a right turn to the north. This will put Custer on the bluffs above the Little Bighorn Valley. From the bluffs, Custer can observe Reno's charge into the valley. 2.55 p.m., Reno's advance turns into a full gallop. M and A companies take the lead. M company takes the left flank, and A company takes the right. G company brings up the rear. All three companies are now engaged. 3 p.m., June 25, 1876. The Battle of the Little Bighorn has begun. Custer has ordered Reno to attack the southern end of the Indian village. Custer's idea is that Reno's attack on the southern end of the village would attract the warriors. Meanwhile Custer would ride north to the fleeing non-combatants. The non-combatants are the women, children and old people. If they could be captured, the warriors would not fight. Shortly after 3 p.m., Reno halts the charge. Reno's battalion of 175 soldiers, civilian personnel, and Aracora and Crow scouts halt in the valley and form a thin skirmish line. Warriors race out from the village to oppose him. After 10 minutes of fighting, Lakota and Cheyenne warriors outflank Reno, forcing him into the timber on his right. Meanwhile, Custer is on the bluffs, watching developments of the battle. Thus begins the timber fight. The timber fight begins around 3.15 p.m. Reno occupies a defensive position in the timber. Determined to defend their village, warriors soon penetrate the woods, convincing Reno that the position is untenable. Bloody Knife, Custer's favorite scout, is standing next to Reno. A shot rings out, Bloody Knife is fatally injured. This discombobulates Reno into a panic. After fighting for 30 minutes Reno retreats across the Little Bighorn River. During Reno's retreat from the timber, Crazy Horse, Wooden Leg, Black Elk and as many as 600 warriors chase the soldiers across the Little Bighorn River. Reno's casualties are 40 men killed and 13 wounded. Lakota and Cheyenne casualties are few. By 4.10 p.m. Reno and most of the soldiers have somehow made it to the top of Reno Hill, their defensive area for the next 36 hours. 40 soldiers died in the span of an hour. Several soldiers still trapped in the valley timber waited until nightfall to escape and find their way to the defensive position. Very few soldiers that remained in the timber survived. Not long after Reno reached the top of the hill and at about 4.20 p.m., Captain Frederick Benteen with H, D and K companies arrived. Benteen's three companies totaled about 125 soldiers. Soldiers who have yet to see any fighting. Contrary to orders given by Custer, Benteen remains on Reno Hill and does not go to Custer's defense. Instead, Benteen organizes the Reno Hill defense, as Reno is shell-shocked as to what has happened to his command. Around 5.25 the pack train arrives on Reno Hill. There are about 125 soldiers with the pack train. Reno, Benteen and pack train remain in a defensive position on the hill until the Terry Gibbons column arrive about 36 hours later. No one knows where Custer and his command are. They suspect he was driven off to the north, but are unsure. They will learn Custer's fate and his last stand in the coming days.
Julian Jones. Sounds like a basketball player. <laughs> We're at the end of Reno Hill. Dark Warrior Long Road. 